So again, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you to the second of two bidders conferences for the latest PA Smart initiative, um, which was released on August 12th. And that is the Growing Registered Apprenticeships and Pre-Apprenticeships in Pennsylvania initiative. The purpose of this meeting is to provide you with information that is specific to grant opportunity number two, as it's detailed in the PA Smart Notice of Grant Availability or the NGA as we refer to it. And of course, to allow for questions from you. My name is Sam Premack. I'm the Workforce Development Analyst for the Apprenticeship and Training Office uh, managing this grant program. I'll be serving as your point of contact for questions and technical assistance. Uh, with me today is Tara Lowe, Director of the ATO. And I'd also like to introduce Christy DeWitt, Workforce Development Supervisor with the ATO, and Amy Ferguson, a fiscal technician with the Bureau of Workforce Development Administration. Um, they will be lending their support uh, throughout the conference, which is greatly appreciated. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank the rest of the ATO team for joining us this afternoon and providing their support. So there are just a few kind of housekeeping items that I'd like to cover before we begin. Um, again, I want to let you know that this bidders conference is being recorded. We do ask that you enter your questions using the chat feature. Um, everyone is muted. Um, uh, we do prefer that um, questions are entered um, using that chat feature, and they can really be entered throughout the conference. Um, we will you know, be providing the answers to these questions during the question and answer period towards the end of the conference. So everything that is being covered today is included in the NGA apart from the questions and answers, uh, which will be transcribed and provided in the near future, um, as well as um, this recording. Um, so without further ado, we'll move into the, the NGA. So I'd like to just begin with a brief overview and introduction of the initiative. This grant opportunity is guided by the PA SMART framework. And so those of you who may not be familiar may be wondering, what is PA SMART? The framework for Governor Wolf's PA statewide movement for accountability, readiness and training, or PA SMART as we know it, was designed to better align education, workforce, and economic development initiatives and funding. The initiative was designed as a strategic, competitive, and cross-sector investment, which is focused on meeting the education and workforce development needs of students, workers, employers, and communities across Pennsylvania, including those disconnected from education and workforce opportunities. PA SMART grants support the following principles and funding priorities, data-driven innovation, cross-sector partnership, cross-sector alignment, stakeholder engagement, equity, diversity, and inclusion, capacity building, leveraging existing resources, and performance outcomes. Uh, we will be taking a closer look at these principles and priorities as we review the grant opportunities evaluation criteria uh, and priority considerations later during the conference. The 2020-2021 PA SMART Growing Registered Apprenticeships and Pre-Apprenticeships Initiative was created in partnership with the Apprenticeship and Training Office. It provides up to $12.5 million in two competitive grant opportunities to align, expand, and diversify the apprenticeship model to include non-traditional occupations, non-traditional program models, and non-traditional populations. Specifically, funds will support apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship through two grant opportunities. Grant opportunity number one makes $11.5 million available to build, support, and expand registered apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship programs with a specific focus on diverse talent pipelines and underserved populations 
non-traditional occupations, alignment with secondary and or post-secondary educational institutions, and expedited growth through multi-county or statewide initiatives. Grant opportunity number two makes $1 million available to support registered apprenticeships and pre-apprenticeship through ambassador networks across the Commonwealth. And as you know, the focus of today's bidders conference is grant opportunity number two. So next we're going to take a look at information that is specific to grant opportunity number two including available funding, the needs and purposes that the ATO hopes to address through the opportunity, priority consideration that will be given to applicants during the evaluation process, as well as project outcomes. As I said earlier, a total of $1 million in competitive funding is available for inter in intermediaries, excuse me, to support the statewide apprenticeship ambassador network through creating new or supporting existing local and or regional apprenticeship ambassador networks. Competitive grants up to $200,000 will be awarded to support new or existing local or regional apprenticeship ambassador networks across the Commonwealth, concentrating on growing apprenticeship in multiple sectors and not just one industry, as well as building a network of people trained on growing programming and apprenticeship ecosystems long term well after well after the expiration of this grant. So now we'll focus on the roles and responsibilities of successful local and or regional ambassador networks. Um, please note that this is only a portion of the roles and responsibilities. We do have a full detailed list that is found in the NGA. And um, for this portion, um, Tara, I know you were planning on chiming in, um, but I will just kind of review these bullet points and ask you to elaborate um, upon conclusion of the listing here. So a successful local and or regional ambassador network is expected to create grow or enhance a set network of people trained on building programming and apprenticeship ecosystems and provide a sustainability plan for after the expiration of this grant. Successful ambassador networks will partner with PA career links um, with a concentration on training or supporting Title I staff under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act or other workforce development professionals who act as ambassadors and grow this work. Successful ambassador networks will also concentrate on serving areas within one or multiple existing regions, which include Southwestern, Northwestern, North Central, South Central, Northeastern, and Southeastern. And successful networks will support and partner with previously existing ambassador networks across the Commonwealth in the following regions, Southwestern, Northwestern, North Central, South Central, Northeastern, and Southeastern. And I do want to note that later in the, the presentation, we will have a chart um, that shows you coverage across the Commonwealth um, in terms of networks. And a successful network will develop outreach and engagement strategies to connect with employers, training providers, and supporting partners with the Apprenticeship Ambassador Network. In addition, successful networks will assist in building, registering, maintaining, and enhancing registered apprenticeship programs, which include the following. Assistance in ecosystem building and program design through planning, meeting facilitation, and other, um, other aspects. Working in partnership with the ATO to take potential programs through the registration process and prepare to present to the Apprenticeship and Training Council. Assist newly approved programs in launching and maintaining their programs. 
assist programs build and develop capacity and multiple entry points for apprentices. Assist and act as support to local workforce professionals as they connect job seekers to apprenticeship. Successful networks will also provide resources and presentations and support design um, programming to educate on apprenticeship and advocate, advocate for it as a premier solution to workforce needs. They'll also provide access to information that is related to federal and state funding opportunities available to support apprenticeship. Uh, before we move on, Tara, um, was there anything you, you would like to add um, when we focus on the roles and responsibilities of the ambassador networks? Um, not necessarily, Sam, but could you just go back to the first slide? Um, I just wanted to kind of reiterate, <laughs> in all honesty, what um, what Sam already highlighted here in the importance. So this is not an exhaustive list of the different roles and responsibilities, but, but some of the key points that we thought were important. Um, I think I want to definitely highlight the idea of a sustainability plan and... <laughs> I'll get down from my soapbox in a second, but this is also in regards to grant opportunity one. I think it's important for us to always come back to the fact that um, all of these grantees need to create initiatives and, and projects that are sustainable. Apprenticeship in itself, especially when we're talking about a program, is an investment by the employer in their workforce. And that should really be the driving factor. So these grants are great to assist in building infrastructure, especially Opportunity One. The grant is great for to assist in building infrastructure of building a program, but it should not be the only reason um, why people are looking to build programs. And I would say the same thing about these ambassador networks. Um, just because this funding opportunity is available should not be the only reason why you're looking to, to build or grow an ambassador network. And I think, especially um, when it comes down to um, career links, one stops, um, and I think other entities, hopefully everyone is seeing the benefit and the need for apprenticeship. Um, and why they would want to participate in growing this. So that sustainability plan for this project is key. We don't want to just support you having an ambassador network for three years and then have it kind of go to the wayside. This is something that we're hoping to help you build an infrastructure for and then have that essentially exist and potentially grow um, down the road. And again, obviously, hopefully everyone on this call sees the benefits to that and would be willing to do that. Um, it's important that you involve your local one stops and career links in this process. And we highly recommend, regardless of who the applicant is, that you involve um, some of the career link staff in that train, that network of people that you must train. So again, coming back to that for a second, this grant funding should not support one person acting as an ambassador. This is really about building a network of people. Now that network of people might look a little bit different, right? Depending on the region you're serving um, and how you choose to do things. But again, we want this to be something sustainable and having one person handle that is not going to be a sustainable um, model. And then the last thing I just wanted to, again, kind of reiterate that Sam already said, is there are previous grantees that have won um, ambassador grants. We need to ensure that there's as little duplication as possible. So if you're a new grantee coming in um, and looking for a new ambassador grant, it is imperative that you work with and partner with in some way any other existing ambassador networks, especially if they cross regions. Um, so if you need information on who they are, feel free to reach out to us. But that is absolutely something we're going to be looking for in your continued work as we evaluate and certainly in your proposal. Um, I think that's it, Sam, really. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Moving right along from roles and responsibilities, now we'll take a look at priority considerations that will be included during the grant evaluation process. 
Sam, I'm sorry. I did want to highlight one more thing. And this oh, sure. is maybe, I'm so sorry. This is maybe just a hint mm -hmm. and something to use in your proposals. You know, we talk here about presentations and access to resources. Um, again, just think about, we don't want to be recreating the wheel. So you should be working together with already created resources. You should be working with the ATO to ensure that you're using the Pennsylvania specific processes. Um, you know, I'm sure everyone on this call is well aware Pennsylvania is a state apprenticeship agency, which means we accept the federal guidelines and standards, but we take it a step farther and we have a Pennsylvania specific process guidelines and we have a council that actually acts as the approving agency. Um, so it's important that the communication you put out is really tying in to already created resources and ensuring that you're um, really connecting and being the liaison to those Pennsylvania specific processes. So we would be looking for support of that within the proposals as well. Great, thank you. So, um, Jumping back to priority considerations. Um, so we're looking at the pr proposals that support, of course, the aforementioned PA SMART principles and funding priorities. Um, and I'll just take a moment and explain um, how projects can really emphasize alignment with those principles and priorities. So with data-driven div innovation, proposals must identify a clear problem challenge or opportunity that is supported by relevant data and information and include an innovative strategy to increase opportunity for Pennsylvania students, workers, employers, and communities. When we look at cross-sector partnerships, we're looking for proposals to demonstrate an effort to develop strong, high-quality cross-sector partnerships that are committed to working collaboratively to implement the proposal. Applicants are encouraged to have multiple partners from education, workforce development, business, economic development, and community organizations. Partners must demonstrate their commitment through letters of support. When we look at cross-sector alignment, we're looking for proposals to align with existing local, regional, and state education, workforce, and economic development initiatives. To demonstrate stakeholder engagement, proposals must engage partners, customers, and stakeholders, including the target population and the development of the proposal and its implementation. And looking at equity, diversity, and inclusion, um, we're looking for proposals to demonstrate a commitment to serve and increase access for historically underrepresented and underserved students, workers, businesses and communities. Applicants are encouraged to identify and address barriers to education and employment. To show capacity building, proposals will build the applicants or partners organizational capacity to better implement the proposal and support students, uh, workers, businesses, as well as communities. And when we look at leveraging existing resources, Proposals must demonstrate PA smart resources will leverage and supplement, not supplant, existing public and private resources. And finally, proposals must also include measurable performance outcomes, as well as a strategy to conduct an evidence-based evaluation of the program's outcomes and overall effectiveness. So specific to this grant opportunity, priority consideration will also be given to programs that address ambassador networks covering largely, largely uncovered counties. And so as you can see here, we've included a chart, which you can also find in the NGA, which shows counties that are currently being served through ambassador networks in Pennsylvania. These are indicated by an asterisk. The goal is to serve those counties without an asterisk. This is by no means a requirement, but as we said, priority will be given to those programs serving uncovered counties. Priority consideration will also be given to programs serving populations that are traditionally underserved in apprenticeships, especially those with multiple barriers to employment, such as the re-entry or returning citizen population and those with criminal backgrounds. 
And priority consideration will also be given to projects that expand apprenticeship to non-traditional occupations and industry and sectors. With regard to program deliverables, we have defined the following project outcomes. Projects funded through this grant opportunity must have direct or indirect involvement in building, maintaining, or enhancing three registered apprenticeship programs and two registered pre-apprenticeship programs in at least three different sectors or industries. It must also demonstrate that a, that a network of individuals is trained to be able to effectively support apprenticeship or pre-apprenticeship programming and ecosystem building and growth. Must specifically um, demonstrate training or the support of Title I staff uh, or other workforce development professionals who act as ambassadors and grow this work. Projects must also demonstrate service within one or multiple regions and partnering with already existing apprenticeship ambassador networks in the following established areas or regions. That is Southwestern, Northwestern, South Central, North Central, Northeastern, and Southeastern. And finally, funded projects must demonstrate a partnership or coordination with the PA CareerLink and other strategic partners such as secondary or post-secondary institutions. Sam, I'm sorry, can I just interject for one second? Absolutely. And I would just refer everyone back to that table that Sam referenced earlier. If you're not sure what is considered um, the Southwestern region, the Northwestern region, we actually broke it down by workforce development areas and then county under that. So you're going to see Southwestern, what board, what workforce development areas are in that region and then what counties are in that region, if you're wondering. Thank you for that clarification. So now that we've reviewed the information that that was specific to grant opportunity number two, uh, we're going to take a look more at the general grant information. So in terms of eligibility, eligible applicants for this grant opportunity include organizations that serve as sponsors or intermediaries of registered apprenticeship, including businesses, community based organizations, economic development organizations, industry associations, labor organizations, local education agencies, local workforce development boards, nonprofit organizations, post-secondary institutions, uh, public libraries, and STEM ecosystems. Um, in terms of, um, you know, capacity and bandwidth for each, um, eligible applicant. I do want to emphasize that this is a reimbursement grant. Um, so funding funding is only provided to grantees after expenses have been incurred. Um, any eligible applicant may serve as a fiscal agent for this grant. And the complete application process is detailed in the NGA, uh, which can be found online. I've also included the link to the NGA posting on this slide as well. So PA Smart Funding is anticipated to be used for grant related activities between January 1, 2022 and June 30th, 2024. The PA Smart Grant Funding Stream is subject to a yearly waiver process and must receive approval from the Commonwealth to allow for the continuation of the grant and funding. Waivers are not guaranteed. Uh, grantees must be aware that the grant may be terminated at any point should the funding not be extended or available or waivered. I do ask that you refer to the NGA for information on program reporting and evaluation. Uh, the ATO will meet with all grant awardees to review program reporting and evaluation requirements. Applications must be complete and submitted 
by 5 p.m. on October 13th, 2021. The application must be no more than 12 pages. Budget documents and letters of support do not count toward the total. Additional information on the submission requirements and process can refer to this slide. I've included additional information. And of course, it is all included in the NGA as well. And now I just want to take uh, a, a few moments and direct you to the application components that must be completed. We have a project summary page that can be found in Appendix D of the NGA. We also require that the Apprenticeship PA SMART application form um, be completed, and that can be found in Appendix E of the NGA. Of course, the project narrative must include details um, addressing all of the evaluation criteria um, that can be found in Appendix C of the NGA. And of course, each application must have at least three letters of support, and each application must have at least one letter from an education, workforce development, or business or economic development partner. Applicants must also submit a detailed budget that includes expenditures by line item. The budget will be evaluated based on evaluation criteria and in terms of cost reasonableness and the relationship to proposed activities. Budgets must be for the time period January 1, 2022 through June 30th, 2024. The budget will also become the financial basis for any grant award including making cost reimbursement payments over the course of the project. Um, the budget form is available in Appendix F of the NGA, and it does include examples. Um, we've also included this form along with the um, NGA posting as a fillable Excel spreadsheet. Also, be sure to uh, use Appendix H of the NGA, which is the FSR cost category, um, as an additional resource when you're completing the budget form, uh, really to assist you with titling and defining each available cost category. And here we've included a snapshot of the budget form. You can see that the budget type is separated into admin and program costs with specific subcategories for administration, career and supportive services, and training. Again, the FSR cost category will assist with titling and defining those cost categories and is an additional resource that we've included in the NGA. Applications must also include completed budget justifications. Uh, each expenditure must be justified by line item, including the cost that is proposed in each category, as well as any other information to support the budget. Budget justification instructions can be found in Appendix G of the NGA. Applicants must describe desired outcomes of proposed initiatives and how they um, will be measured. This component should include measurable goals, outcomes, services, performance indicators, evaluation methods, target numbers to be served, and a timeline to meet the goal or outcome. Applicants should use the goals and outcomes table found in Appendix I of the NGA. This table is also included along with the NGA posting as a fillable Excel spreadsheet. And here we've provided a snapshot of the goal and outcomes table. And finally, we ask that applicants describe their project timelines by creating a roadmap, if you will, to include implementation steps necessary to achieve outcomes, cohort start and finish dates, milestones, plans for long-term sustainability, and the ability to scale and replicate. The timeline should be broken down by each quarter within the grant period. Uh, the timeline template can be found in Appendix J of the NGA, uh, we've also included the template along with the original NGA posting as a fillable Word document. 
And for your information and reference, we've included a snapshot of the timeline template here. So all applicants and fiscal agents must be registered with the Commonwealth as a vendor. Applicants and fiscal agents that are not current vendors are strongly encouraged to begin this process immediately following the application submission. They can do that by registering their organization with the vendor data management unit um, by either accessing the website that is um, shown on this slide or by calling the phone numbers that are listed on this slide as well. Applicants who are not registered with VDMU at the time of award may have their award rescinded. An electric electronic copy of the application and all components must be emailed to the ATO grants resource account, uh, and that is RA-LIATO-GRANTS at PA.gov. That is our resource account. By 5 p.m. on October 13th, 2021, and we've got the formatting for the email subject line um, included on this slide as well. So that concludes the specific and more general grant information portion of this conference. Uh, we will now begin the question and answer portion of the bidders conference. Um, up until the time of this conference at one, we had not received any questions in our resource account. So we will move to the questions that have been entered through the chat feature. And um, Christy, I will turn it over to you to start um, with the questions. Great, thank you, Sam. We only had one question come in actually, so you must have done an amazing job. Oh, <laughs> great, yeah. Um, and this um, request is if you can further define the um, the ambassador program. They were unsure if they were understanding exactly what it was. So, um, Tara, do you want to chime in on that? Uh, sure. So yeah. hopefully, I mean, hopefully being a part of the presentation was helpful and reading through and listening to kind of our comments as far as the roles and responsibilities are helpful. If the question is in fact, what is an ambassador? Um, essentially an ambassador is a promoter of the growth of apprenticeship programs and an advocate for connecting job seekers to apprenticeship. Um, so essentially what we hope to do at the ATO is we hope to build a network of people that across the whole statewide that promote the growth um, of apprenticeship programs and advocate for connecting job seekers to apprenticeship. Um, so what we're, we're looking for through this grant is basically the creation of smaller regional groups of those ambassadors to help serve the overarching um, statewide network that we're looking to achieve eventually. So I hope that kind of, I hope that helps. Um, the NGA is pretty detailed as far as roles and responsibilities and um, what we would be, be looking for. And I would say pay close attention to that outcome section as well, because that would be extremely important. Obviously you would want to indicate you're going to meet and exceed those outcomes in your proposals and we would be holding you accountable. Um, to that as well. The one thing I did want to highlight, it was in the presentation, it certainly is in the NGA as well. It's important to note that we, that this, your ambassador network should not be centered around one industry. Um, really, you should be growing multiple industries, but I think we've even put in the outcome section, you must prove that you've served at least three or more industries in some way, shape or form. And we're not putting uh, necessarily directions around what those industries are, um, but again, it should not be just one industry. Great, thank you, Sam. I did have another question come in. Oh, great. Will the Apprenticeship and Council consider these applications and expedite any approvals? 
that's a question that I would probably have to um, either refer to Tara or we may have to um, kind of follow up on that. Unless, Tara, you're able to. Yeah, I mean, there would not be any priority given. It would any programs that essentially ambassadors would build would need to follow the same council, um, the same process as far as working with us. You know, our role as far as the apprenticeship and training office is really as kind of civil servants and supporters and, and helping get sponsors and applications ready to um meet PA specific standards and then be presented to council. And then um, it would follow the same process as far as council goes for consideration of approval. So I hope I hope that helps answer. There really can't be, I think what you're looking for maybe is, are these programs that are built by ambassadors expedited? And it would, it would there would no, be no priority. It would follow the same exact procedure across the board. We, we, you know, must try to keep things as fair and even across the board. That is all the questions that have come in, Sam. Great. Wow. Big difference from yesterday's meeting. Um, so, well, I, I do want to put this out there um, for anyone who does have any questions that come up, um, you know, after the, the conference today. Um, you know, you are able to continue to submit those questions um, in writing to the ATO Grants Resource Account. Uh, again, that is ra-liato-grants at pa.gov. Um, and we will um, respond to those in a timely manner. Um, we will also be um, transcribing the questions and answers and um, working that into a separate document that we will be posting in the near future. Um, and of course, we will be um, able to make this recording available to you as well. Um, you know, if you are interested in, in receiving this recording, please send an email to the grants resource account. Um, again, if you have additional questions, please feel free to re uh, reach out to the resource account and um, we will get this information to you in a timely manner. With that being said and no additional questions, that does conclude today's bidders conference for grant opportunity two under this PA Smart NGA. Um, I have included my contact information, including my email address um, and of course the, the resource account. Um, please feel free to reach out um, if you need assistance, additional questions, anything like that. Um, on behalf of the ATO, I would like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>